Schellenberger Field, the site at the University of Lynchburg for what promises to be a windy and wild contest tonight between the number one CNU captains and the number 11 Lynchburg Hornets. Welcome into the broadcast tonight. I'm Dave Walls from ABC 13. Filling in tonight on the play-by-play -play call should be an exciting one as Lynchburg is coming off a couple of nice back-to-back -back wins in order to build up some momentum last week, winning a overtime battle over Washington and Lee, then soundly defeating their crosstown rivals from Randolph just one night to go. Christopher Newport, meanwhile, a solid 11-0 and and has been uh, demolishing ODAC teams left and right recently, including Hamden Sydney, Washington and Lee, and also Randolph Macon. Tonight, the fourth and final of the captain's ODAC contest before they travel to Salisbury uh, later next week. For the Litchburg Hornets, Riley Mitchell's been the top goal scorer so far this season. 17 goals for the All-American, 30 points overall. Riley Hastings as well, also 12 points, uh, 12 goals, 29 points as well. The, the captains, however, come in with a with a lot of firepower. In fact, five of their top scorers all have more than 20 goals on the season. Andrew Cook with 41. Same for Brett Jackson, 41 as well. Ten of Jackson's 41 goals all coming on the man up situation. So CNU, a team that likes to run up the score, likes to get out and about early. Litchburg, meanwhile, has been able to do nice things on defense. Coach Steve Kadelka's squad's been uh, pleased with his offense all season long. His young defense has been coming up and making some big plays, but closing out some of those tougher games has certainly been an issue down the stretch. Fans will remember about a month ago that uh, the Hornets were leading the, uh, number four Salisbury late in the game before the Seagulls were able to uh, tie it up with just seconds on the clock and then win it in overtime for a, a stinging defeat here at Schellenberger Field. But since then, again, the Hornets have uh, – Again, defeated Washington and Lee in an overtime battle, defeating Randolph and they last night 18 to one, and looking to keep up that momentum tonight. As we mentioned, the weather conditions. Well, uh, what you can, what you'll be able to see in the trees in the background and the flags. It has been a windy day to say the least here in Central Virginia, with wind gusts uh, easily cresting over 40 to 50 miles per hour in parts of our region. In fact, uh, I took a road trip uh, earlier today up into Allegheny County to the north across the border to West Virginia for a little while. And uh, you'll see a lot of tree damage, some down power lines, certain uh, areas uh, are experiencing some power outages. So uh, we'll have to wait and see how the wind will affect uh, shot velocity and also shot trajectory tonight as uh, the night goes on. It will promise to be a windier evening as the night goes on. As far as uh, any rain possibilities, it looks like most of that has moved out. We do have some scattered clouds still hanging around over the campus of the University of Lynchburg. But the field uh, looks to be dry and uh, relatively warm as well. Uh, so uh, you're seeing a lot of short sleeves uh, in, the, in the stands, even though despite the heavy wind conditions. Opening introductions for the Hornets now taking place. Again, CNU will be wearing the blue jerseys, white numbers, white trim with blue stripes. Lynchburg will wear the home white jerseys with the red shorts and red helmets and numbers. Glad you're tuned in tonight. Thanks again to everyone here at the University of Lynchburg Athletic Dir Director John Waters and the entire staff here for allowing me to fill in uh, to on tonight's broadcast. Hornets getting in one final huddle here at midfield. Again, we'll uh, look over again some of the storylines to watch out for. Again, uh, the captains really love to put up points in a hurry with both Andrew Cook and Brett Jackson, both each of 41 goals so far on the season. Uh, again, five, their top five scores all at least have 20 goals on the year. So again, a lot of their uh, a lot of their victories have really been high scoring contests, with the captains able to outlast opponents, wear them down with those with those big shots big plays in fact both jackson and cook each have over 100 goals now for those of you watching in the lynchburg area there's all some familiar names to watch out for on the cnu sideline as well max max gladio number 29 he's a junior from right here in lynchburg went to ec glass high school and helped lead the hilltoppers to a state championship several years ago lynchburg will be going Left to right on your screens. As the ball's down for the opening faceoff, we're getting ready to get this contest underway. Number one, Christopher Newport. Number 11, Lynchburg. Whistles underway, and so are we with the Hornets knocking the ball back. 
Faceoff still being fought for, briefly controlled. Nope, ball is still loose now. In fact, going now deep into Newport territory. It'll go out of bounds. Referee says the Hornets will take possession of that one as it went off a of captain. So Lynchburg, after 14 seconds of fighting for the faceoff, they will take the initial offensive possession. And they'll do so kicking it all the way up top to Riley Mitchell. Mitchell, 17 goals on the season. Jake Rust now with the ball. Full minute on the shot clock still as Mitchell has the ball on the right side of the net, creeping in towards the crease. He'll now kick it back over to Finn Schmidt. Schmidt with Rust. Schmidt with Rust to his left. Excuse me, that is Rust. He takes the shot. It goes wide. It'll remain Lynchburg ball with 40 on the clock. Sweeping goal, save made by the goaltender. Ball loose and rolling to the far side. And it will remain Lynchburg possession that time. The goaltender got a piece of it. No one else touched it. So Lynchburg, however, will keep the possession. Schmidt brings it back in for the Hornets. Rust has the balls. A new play is called out with 55 on the clock. Rust now in back of the net. Gives it up. Looking for a turnaround shot. Can't find it. So the Hornets back up to Mitchell. Mitchell rolling left to right. Pass, however, goes a little bit wide. Was looking for Schmidt over on the right-hand side. Just couldn't connect into the, into the head. So CNU makes a quick save, gets a turnover, and they'll take over now. Minute and a half into the game with no score. Sun setting on the far side of the field. Schmidt may have had his eyes in the sun a little bit as well, even though there's no shadows on the field. That sun just creeping up over the uh, far side dormitories there. And I can tell you, if we're looking at the same angle right now on the field, we're dealing with a little bit of that sun glare as well, and probably will be for at least this first quarter. So here come the captains now. Two minutes in, not able to find anything on the inside. They're stuck. Outside, nice defense put up by the Hornets. Now they try a little baseline roll inside. Can't find room. Back up top. Here's a shot. Bounces low and wide. It will remain captain's ball. 31 on the clock. Drew Miller. Miller over to Alex Brendez, one of those 20-goal scorers we talked about early on. Brendez looking for some help inside. Can't find it. Now rolls back to his left. Big turn. Here's a shot and a score. Brendan's initially looked for some help inside, couldn't find it. Instead, took about three steps up back and then just turned it, fired, and was able to get into the high side of the net. First goal of the game goes to the captains. 2.23 into the first quarter, one to nothing. And as you see it again here, he's looking for a little help in the back of the net, but he got, found a little bit of extra room right in the cross, just needed that one extra footstep. He was able to get it and able to bury it. So one of things your score, 12-37, still to go here, first quarter. CNU winning about 73% of their face-offs on this season so far, and they're able to do so again. Nice job by Warner Cabadis, who's able to get a ball, however, knocked loose. Multiple flags fly. Hornets are going to get a penalty on the play. So now a free chance up for the captains, trying to make it 2-0 early. Kobe Oslander holding the balls. We get some substitutions in. Two flags behind the play against the Hornets. We'll have to wait and get the official call here after either a goal or stoppage, but action continues. Brendez. Brendez with the ball and holding it with 35 on the shot clock. Brendez with all sorts of room. He turns, fires, and scores. Too much room for Alex Brendes that time. He loaded the cannon and threw it low there. Two quick goals for CNU. They're up two to nothing. 
And with a team who loves to push the offensive action, giving someone about four steps like this is not what Coach Steve Kadelka had in mind. He, there's nobody within three steps of him easy, as Brenda's had way too much room to cock back, load, and fire. So as we get set for another faceoff, Lynchburg does have a man in position right now for a penalty. It's number 56 for the Hornets. Michael Krause, the faceoff man. However, Lynchburg wins the faceoff but then throws it away outside of the back. They were trying to throw it back to goaltender Tyler Hadley, but he wasn't able to get to it in time, so a gift given – to CNU the other way. The cross-checking penalty to Kraus, it's a one-minute violation, so CNU could take some time here to set something up. Instead, they take the shot. Hadley gets a piece of it and goes out of bounds. It'll remain CNU ball. Dealing with a little bit of sun glare here in the early going, so... We'll call out the numbers as soon as we can. Still about 30 seconds left to go on this man-up advantage for the captains. Already up 2-0. A little more than four minutes gone in this first quarter. Far side, low shot. Bounces high over the net. Remains CNU ball, 43 on the shot clock. Andrew Cook was looking for that one. It goes a little bit wide. Auslander's running the point with Brenda's to his left. Back to Auslander. Penalty expiring, and Hadley makes the save on a nice long distance shot that time. Big stop for the Hornets after the one minute man up situation for CNU, and then giving the ball away after a win face, after a winning a face off. So Lynchburg, hopefully for Hornets fans, trying to grab a little momentum here. Down 2 0. Six to two shots on goal favoring the captains right now. The Lynchburg forcing the action. Mitchell to Russ on the right-hand side as the Hornets doing a couple of substitutions on the back side. Going counterclockwise in back of the net. Now over to Mitchell again, 35 on the shot clock. In front of the net, here's a shot, goes low. Not sure if the goaltender saw it or it just happened to be in the right place in time. I think he got a piece of it, and it remains Hornets ball, 30 on the shot clock. Quickly back in action, Russ takes a shot high, but goaltender Zach Hanway in position for the save. Russ could use a little bit of more distraction in front of the net, a little more traffic in order to get that one through, but Hanway had an easy line of sight in order to make that save. Nine and a half to go here in the first. Two nothing CNU. Drew Miller with the ball running in front of Coach Steve Kadelka. Now passes off to Auslander. Looking for some help in front of the net. Instead, they'll go counterclockwise around the back. To Brendez, who has the first two, has traffic in front of him with under 30 to play on the shot clock. Andrew Cook with the ball. Has a man working on him tight. Loses him for a second, throws the shot wide. 17 on the shot clock now. Cook was looking for a rollout off the screen there. Didn't have a great shooting lane, throws it wide. Now with 10 to go on the shot clock. Captains will have to hurry. Shot goes wide. Six seconds to go on the shot clock now. Brendes brings it back into action here. Hornets looking to hold them off. Pass tipped away up front. This shot clock's going to expire, and Hornets will hold them off now on two straight possessions. So after two shaky early possessions, Lynchburg's able to calm things down a little bit, kill off a man-up advantage. And now get two stops. Shout out to the great LHSN crew who's giving you great visuals today despite some 
blistering sun conditions right into your lenses here in the first quarter. The lights will be kicking on here momentarily, and we'll get these. We'll get the great nighttime visuals you're used to here at Schellenberger Field. Eight minutes to go here in the first. Grant Voigt with the ball, holding it as Hornets have completed their substitutions. Now Rust has it far side. Mitchell to his right. Russ rolling into the middle. This time takes a shot. And I don't know the handway saw it, but the shot does go wide. Lynchburg retains possession with 35 on the shot clock. Quickly back into action. Double teamed. Great job that time by CNU. Swallowing up the Hornet on the play. Forcing the turnover. Ball still loose on the ground, but finally picked up and cleared at midfield. Captains just did not allow the man to even get any momentum near the net, swallowed him up, killed his momentum, and was able to knock the ball loose from there. Brendis kicks it back up top. To Excuse me, to Andrew Cook. Cook working one-on-one, -on -one, looking for a screen. Said trips up and drops the ball on the play. Ball still loose. Tipped away. Who's got it? Captains will pick it back up. And now have a run on the play. Three, four on two if they hurry. Far side, however, throw it away out of bounds. However, referees say it was tipped. So CNU will retain possession. The Hornets caught a bit of a break there after forcing the loose ball. CNU had about a four-on-two advantage the other way. Tried to get a little too cute with it, though, and threw a far side wide. Fortunate for them that the Hornets tipped the ball away. But then here's a shot and a score. First quarter hat trick for Alex Brendez. He's feeling it that time. Nailing the far side post and rattling it in to put it up to 3 nothing. Captain's crowd traveling well here to Schellenberger Field, and they're loving this. Just a simple roll off of the man and then turn fire, and Hadley wasn't able to get in position in time. That one ringing off the far side post. Three goals for Alex Brendez so far. All captains on the offensive end here. Still just 6.26 to go here in the first quarter. Now we have a whistle and a face-off violation against Lynchburg, so it will be another CNU possession. Right now, offensively, everything going right for the captains. Coach Steve Kudelka does not agree with the face-off violation, but play does continue. One-on-one -on -one for the captains. Blowing by the man. Here's a shot. Just goes high and wide. Brett Jackson, the six foot 185 sophomore, gets a run that time. Just blowing by his man, but a little too wild on the shot itself. Captain's looking for a roll into the slot with 45 on the shot clock. Now all the way back up top. Nice job by Lynchburg to shut down the middle lanes there. For the most part, the kind of zone play that Lynchburg's defense is doing right now, they've been able to fill some nice spaces one-on-one. -on -one. The captains have had a little bit of an advantage, able to roll off and find, some, find a little bit of open space to get some shots off. Under 20 to go on the shot clock. Drew Miller with the ball. Shot goes wide. Captains will bring it off the baseline with 15 on the shot clock. Late substitution coming off the field for CNU. Now with 10, 9, ball over to Auslander. Oh, excuse me, that's number 10, I should say, and uh, Daniel Saiten. 3, 2, they're not going to get a shot off in time, and they just dump the ball off in a shot clock violation. So Lynchburg has forced two of those. Like I said, the Hornets have done a really nice job of crowding some of the bigger long-distance shooting lanes. It's been in those one-on-one -on -one situations where the captains have been able to use their quickness and agility and just get an extra step on the defender and 
create some shooting space in one-on-one -on -one situations. But when Lynchburg's able to get some traffic and, and block those popular shooting lanes, they've been successful so far in this first quarter. So the Hornets still without a goal so far. Here's a shot that does go wide. Gabe Benacho was hit as he went to shoot. I don't think he got everything he wanted on that one, but the Hornets retain. 45 on the shot clock, 418 left to go here in quarter number one. Ian McCarthy now up top with Finn Schmidt to his right. McCarthy far side now. Spencer Vandenberg out there. Under 20 to go on the shot clock. Up top. McCarthy with it with 10. They'll have to hurry. CNU holding their ground. Not a lot of good lanes. There's a shot that is going to get tipped. It's going to be wide. The Hornets will get it, but with just three seconds. And Lynchburg looks like they'll just play for a shot clock violation here and dump the ball off. That's exactly what they'll do. So take Alex Brenda as part of the game, and neither offense has really been spectacular. Not a lot. And really, Brenda's has had the only real good scoring opportunity so far. Tyler Hadley's had one or two nice saves in net on goal, but Brendis's shots have definitely been the most challenging to stop and probably the fastest so far here in this first. 3 nothing captain's lead. 3-10 to play here in quarter number one. And now we get a late flag that's going to fly as Kobe Auslander hits the turf. Excuse me, Andrew Cook hits the turf, I should say. As Cook hits the turf, Two flags fly, I should say, and fears the Hornets are going to go down for their second penalty of the game. So Chris Darminio, the senior, is going to come over, and he'll take a knee. 30-second man-up situation for the captains on the play. 3.01 to go here in this first quarter. And CNU with an opportunity to push it to a four-goal lead. Quick passes around the horn. Back and forth. About 15 to go in the man up advantage. Now over to Brendes who goes far side. Shot and another score. Alex Brendes, four goals so far here. The dominant force for CNU so far in this game. He gets the man up goal and it's a four nothing lead. Textbook man up offense for CNU that time. Just rotating the ball back and forth around the horn until Brendes just has a little bit of shooting room. That time the defense a little bit better for Lynchburg. They didn't give him as much room, but as he's proven so far tonight, he doesn't need much room. Andrew Cook will get the assist on the man-up goal. Lynchburg wins the faceoff, though, quickly trying to run the other way for a fast break. Here's a diving crease shot save, however, and a late flag will fly as well. Might get a goaltender interference call on that. I believe that's exactly what we're going to get, some sort of interference call. It was Dylan Schuster. No, excuse me. I take that back. It looks like CNU is going to go for a 30-second call. I thought the referee had pointed to Lynchburg, and my apologies for that, but Mason Beckmeyer will take a knee for 30 here. So the Hornets with a big opportunity to get on the board and back in this game. The 30-second push on Breckmeyer, putting Lynchburg a man up for the first time today. Bradley Mitchell hasn't really had much of an opportunity so far on those long-distance shots. Under 10 to go on the man up. Turns, fires, and a score. 
Tell me the Hornets didn't want that one as Spencer Vandenberg turns, fires, finds the twine, and Lynchburg's on the board now, making it a 4-1 game. Sometimes you just have to take advantage of what the other team gives you, and that time Vandenberg did just that. Take a look here. It's nothing fancy, but he found himself with an extra foot of space. Turns, fires, gives a little fist bump at the end. You got to love that. Haven't seen much emotion out of the Lynchburg squad so far. These early goals from Alex Brendes had really brought the mood down, but now you're starting to see a little bit of that energy back on the sideline. So as we resume action, however, we've got another face-off violation. Captains will take it the other way with under two to go now in the first quarter. Four to one, your score if you're just tuning in. Alex Brendes for the CNU captains has all four goals so far for them. Lynchburg just getting on the board in the man-up situation. But back the other way, Drew Miller. Boy. Miller's footwork had the Hornets stymied a little bit that time. I think they were thinking he was going to pass the whole way. You know, he just puts a little stick check into him. They thought they had him far enough off the line. Miller says, nah, -uh, I still got this. Throws it up high, 5-1. to one. And just like that, the quick response of CNU pushing the Hornets back on their heels. Lynchburg winning the faceoff, however, looking for another fast break the other way. Michael Krause fighting off stick check, so Lynchburg will get another opportunity. About a 10-second differential. Let me see here, do some quick math here. And about, about 15-second differential between game clock and shot clock right now. Grant Voigt with the ball in back of the net. Substitutions are complete. Voigt rolling left to right. Thinks about turning. Can't find any space. So he'll go up top to Mitchell. He's got Finn Schmidt to his right. Mitchell said turns, fires. Tricky bounce shot that time. And well handled that time by Zach Hanway, the goaltender. And CNU now quickly rolling back the other way. Two on one in the midfield. Turns, fires. That shot never gets through. And now Lynchburg will use the long stick to quickly push the action back the other way. But the pass... Goes a little bit too hard on the far side for Vandenberg. And now it's the captains of 33 seconds left. Shot clock turned off. Whistle stops play with 31 to go. Now the referees are going to talk it over. Initial whistle came from the, the far side where Lynchburg was playing defense. Seems to be possibly a little confusion of whether the shot clock should be turned off since we're under 60 seconds or if they should be running the whole time. But Captain's head coach Mikey Thompson saying, if there's no penalty, there's no, why did you stop us when we had offensive momentum going there? All right, so the shot clocks are on. At 76 seconds, even though there is 31 seconds left in the quarter. Okay, well, let's continue the action. Captains bringing the ball back out of their own end. Crossing midfield. And now a whistle stops play, and we do have a turnover. Coach Steve Kadelka and the Hornets bench screaming for it, for the violation in midfield. Now Mitchell quickly turning and firing, going... Low to high, kicks it a little bit too high over the net. Hornets will get the ball with 12.6 left to go in the quarter. Shots are nearly even, 13-11 in favor of the captains, but Lynchburg finally gets it inside the net for the score. 8.8 .8 seconds left to go in the quarter, and you want a little momentum going into the second quarter. That's where you get it there on those goals in the last minute, last couple seconds that can really change the mood going into the into the new frame. Riley Hastings able to bounce this one and take a look. Kind of got the goaltender Hanway right around the knees. He thought he could go low to block it with the knees, but instead he just kicked up 
right over top of his stick. CNU gets the face off with five. Four, they may be able to get a last second shot off. Brendes has it, turns, but the ball slips out of his stick. Lynchburg is going to be able to clear, and that will do it for the first quarter of play. Alex Brendes, four goals already for CNU. That's your storyline so far, but the Hornets with some late momentum thanks to a man-up situation and then a late goal by Riley Hastings. Going to the second quarter, the CNU captains five, the Lynchburg Hornets two. We'll be right back with the second quarter of action on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lynchburg, we have an on-campus zip line for Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience. This is the doll. It's wicked cute. It's always so pretty. The dorm balconies at Schellenberger Field getting a good one tonight as number one in Division Three of lacrosse, CNU, enjoying a 5-2 lead right now over the home number 11 Lynchburg Hornets. Hi, everybody. Dave Walls, sports director from ABC 13. Glad to step in tonight for the play-by-play -play over here at Schellenberger Field. And wind inside, it's a gorgeous evening. As we mentioned in pregame, the wind gusts in the area uh, have been reaching 40 miles per hour, even depending on where you are in the central Virginia area, have been cresting beyond that to the north. They've been going up north of 50 miles an hour, but the early morning rain hasn't dampened the turf or the spirits here at Schellenberger Field tonight. Good night for lacrosse action. As we get things going, Lynchburg will be the beneficiary of a face-off violation. They're not moving right to left on your screens. Riley Mitchell over to Jake Rust on the left-hand side as we resume action. Shots on goal virtually even. The captains did take a late advantage, 14-11 to 11 entering this quarter as that shot goes wide of the net. Lynchburg takes possession with 60 on the shot clock. Sticks getting a little bit up high, but Lynchburg able to bounce off, but the ball does bounce out. But great back check back the other way. Lynchburg able to get it right back. And then fakes a man out near the bench. Riley Hastings did a great job that time of staying with the play. Had the ball checked out of his stick instead of giving up. He gave chase and gave it one good whack and gave his Hornets the team the ball right back. And now Lynchburg fighting through a check and a score. Finn Schmidt had a stick wrapped around him and then instead of giving up on the play, dragged his defender about 10 feet along for the ride, was able to stuff the ball up high, and now it's the Hornets one minute into this quarter, made it a two-goal game. Take another look. Had the stick underneath the armpit, but never seemed to affect the shot that time. Great concentration by Schmidt in order to make it a two-goal game. CNU ran out to a 4-0 lead thanks to four straight goals by Alex Brendes, but since that time, Hornets have had a three to one goal advantage. And now it's Lynchburg winning the face off again. Hornets get it across midfield. With Cole Nestor, the senior, dumping it off for he comes off for a substitution. Midfield's done some nice work here in the last few minutes. To Ian McCarthy, who's out now, had some action in the first quarter. Gay Benacha. Tight one-on-one -on -one defense there. Now over to the far side to Connor Moore. Moore is going to go around the net, back up top to McCarthy. 30 seconds ago on the shot clock. About two minutes gone here in the second quarter. It's a 5-3 CNU lead. Ball on the turf briefly, but picked back up by Moore. Now he'll run close to the net on the crease line. Now in back of the net. Hornets retaining possession, 15 to go on the shot clock. Nice spin move far side. However, the shot deflected, never gets through on net. Hornets pick it up, though, with 10. They're going to have to hurry. 
McCarthy called for it. The point said here's a bounce shot that's going to go wide. Lynchburg will retain possession with just four on the shot, but the referees do give a reset. They say Handway touched the ball. Captain's sideline can't believe the call, but didn't have an angle on myself to see if contact was made, but it was the close referee who had the angle to see it who made that late call. So Lynchburg gets a fresh 60 seconds with McCarthy now over to the far side to Finn Schmidt. Shot inside and a score. The Hornets off and running here in the second quarter. Now making it a one goal game, five to four. That shot the 15th of the game so far. And take a look at this one here is they just go quickly in back of the net. Tic tac toe for the goal. Beautiful job that time on the far side by Spencer Vandenberg. That's his second of the game. Quickly, though, the captains have the ball at the faceoff, go for a low breakaway shot, goes low and wide, but CNU trying to catch the Hornets on their heels almost worked that time. Captains, however, do have the ball. They're going for some substitutions right now, so they'll hold it for a few seconds. So for Lynchburg, Vandenberg with two, Hastings of one, Finn Schmidt with one. Christopher Newport, it's been Alex Brendis with the four, and then Drew Miller right now with the deciding go-ahead goal right now. Ball goes out of bounds. Captains will retain possession. 46 still to go on the shot clock. 11.43 to go here in the first half. 5-4 your score. Kobe Auslander with the ball, bouncing off his defender. Now Auslander gets past him into the slot. Here's a shot that bounces over Tyler Hadley. Captains quickly pick it back up, under 20. Auslander has the ball checked away brilliantly that time. And now here's the long stick from Chris Darminio bringing it on the fast break. Darminio with a man to his left. Now around. Thinks about the shot. Instead, it goes just wide. Lynchburg will retain the possession, but Darminio... Gets the initial poke check out. Another defender picks it back up and then hits Darminio on the fast break to give themselves the opportunity. Great individual play by the long stick. Gets some high fives as he comes off for a substitution. Play is in. Substitutions are done. Riley Mitchell with the ball. Rolling right to left. His shot just misses wide. However, it will remain Lynchburg possessions. 10.41 to go here in quarter number two. Hornets call out a new play with 36 to go on the shot clock. Finn Schmidt with the ball in back of the net. Looking for some movement in front of him. He'll feed it off to Jake Rust. Rust near side. One-on-one. -on -one. Nice little spin. Creates some space. Now back over to Voigt, who's got a lane of his own. Just goes high over the net. 12 seconds to go on the shot clock. 10.05 to go here, quarter number two. Hornets will have to move quickly. Now 10 to play. Turns, fires, goes wide. Lynchburg giving chase with 6-5. They'll still take over, but five seconds on the shot clock. As Hanway does not make contact and goal. So three, two, one. And the Hornets don't think they're going to get the shot off. Ball dropped on the turf. So both sides have forced a couple shot clock violations. But the Hornets had a couple chances there to tie this game up. So Christopher Newport takes over. A couple midfield substitutions taking place in back of the action. Kobe Oslander over to Wilt Mercado. Mercado with a nice move there to create some space. Over to Brett Jackson. Jackson rolling now right into the slot. Here's a shot that bounces low and wide out of bounds.
Jackson with over 20 goals on the season so far, but hasn't had much in the way of offensive opportunities so far tonight. 40 to play on the shot clock. Nice roll that time, but captains can't get a shot off, so Auslander will hold the ball now. One-on-one -on -one defense being applied. Goes down on the play, and we'll say crease violation. Auslander may have been trying to get a holding flag out of the referee. He just says, no, sir, you stepped into the crease first, and that's a violation, so... Lynchburg able to force a turnover. We'll come back the other way. 8.42 here to go in quarter number two. However, turnover now. The captains have numbers the other way. Quick break the other side. Here's a shot. Big save by Tyler Handley. Ooh, that was a tricky one bouncing up there. But if this was box across, you'd say he'd stack the pads. Kind of got the knees right in position to let it bounce off of him. So just like that, a fast break and a fast save for Lynchburg, keeping it at a one-goal game. Hadley's had two real good point-blank saves today. That's the second one, the first one coming in the first quarter where he was screened on a play but yet was able to get the stick on a high shot as the shot clock was getting ready to expire. So he has been tested, and aside from the Alex Brenda's goals, which didn't really have much of an opportunity on, he's been up to the challenge so far tonight. Voigt up top. This shot gets deflected. goes off a helmet, I believe, and goes – about five feet in the air before scooting out of bounds. Hornets, however, will keep it with 32 on the shot clock. 7.41 to go in the half. It's interesting, as the ball went off the helmet, watching the wind push it about 10 feet <laughs> the other direction here. Blowing towards Turner, Turner Gymnasium, which is in back of the uh, goal that CNU is defending. That shot blocked and now rolling. Won't go out of bounds. Lynchburg will get it. They did get a reset, however, on the, sh on the clock thanks to the save, so... Lynchburg is a fresh 60 to work with. Finn Schmidt with the ball, picks it up off the turf. He's got Mitchell to his left side. Now looking for some space near side. Rolling, rolling over to Mitchell. Far side to Schmidt. And back of the net now. Mitchell looking for Vandenberg. Yeah, and he's got it for the score. Throw the hats in the air. Spencer Vandenberg's got the hat trick. The freshman tying the game up at five. On a night where some of Lynchburg's more known scorers haven't been able to put the ball in the back of the net, it's the freshman who's been able to stand and deliver tonight. And you got to love the quick passing that sets this up. Mitchell with the quick pass. Vandenberg two steps, a little fake thrown in the middle for good measure, and Gets the chest, even nails the chest bump. When you're a freshman, you got to get the details right. You got to love that. 21 to 18 shots on goal in favor of the Hornets. Now tied up 5 5 after early momentum was all rolling downhill for CNU. Captains, however, do win the faceoff. Trying to pass it in the middle. The ball's still loose on the turf. Hornets able to pick it up. Darminio, nice job that time. He had two d CNU captains around him. And he was somehow able to pick it up, scoop. Pass goes out of bounds, but referees say deflected by the captain, so it does remain Lynchburg ball. 6.28 to go in quarter number two. 5-5 five, five your score. Hornets on a 4-1 run as we speak. 3-0 if you count just this quarter. CNU hasn't scored since the late goings of quarter number one. Ball knocked loose. Lynchburg in position, in position, I should say, to pick it back up, and they do with 50 on the clock. However, good stick checks that time. Sticks get up a little high on both sides. Referees say play on, and the captains get a crucial turnover. Whenever a defender or someone gets the stick up that high in tight, in tight areas, you kind of look for the flag a little bit, but the referee in position said everything was, everything was kosher. Late substitutions are complete. Captain's got room right up the middle that time. However, the shot blocked. Captain's took a swipe at it that time. I believe it was Auslander. I think took out the eight iron and took a nice shot out of the bunker on that one. Put, puts it into the net. However, counts as a shot. So, Captain's get the ball with 49 to go on the shot clock. 529 to go in the half. 
Drew Miller in back of the net for CNU. Brenda is now at the ball far side, already with four goals on the night. Now he resets near midfield, draws a bit of a double team. Not a bad idea with the success he's had, but one-on-one -on -one down in the crease, shot and a score. When you pull the double teams, usually somebody is left wide open, and Kobe Oslander knocking on the door. Gets the pass, turns, fires, doesn't have to do anything special there. And the captains retake the lead at 6-5. to five. Great awareness that time by CNU to realize that the double team on Brendis was on. And just a quick fire down to the net. As right there, the, the extra defender got pulled up to try to take away the lane from Brendis to fire. And when he did that, also under wide open for the stocking stuffer. Ball loose on the faceoff violation. We're going to get a push. CNU will take possession. Under five to play now before the half. It's what's been an exciting matchup. Looked like it was go, going to go entirely one way at the start, and now both teams have settled down into a back-and-forth affair. Drew Miller will get it. He's got Will Mercado to his right. Brendes on the far side to the left. Mercado holds it now. He draws a double team. Ball is loose on the turf, quickly picked up by Lynchburg, but a whistle stops play, and I think we're going to get a some form of a loose ball violation or, or an illegal screen, and so CNU retakes possession on a fresh 60. Four twenty-two left to go in the first half. Brett Jackson with the ball around the crease line. Now over to Mercado, who goes left to right and back, all the way back up top to Brenda's now. Oslander rolling. Here's a shot that just stays out of the net. Oh, boy. CNU put sticks in the air. They thought they had it on the bench, but Tyler Hadley gets enough of the ball to slow it, turns around, and sees it on the ground about a foot away from the goal line and falls on it to make a very timely save. Now Lynchburg off and running the other way. Nice job again that time by Henry Mandarin getting the ball across the midfield line. Turns, fires, score. Finn Schmidt had a little room on the far hand side. Had a nice angle. Caught the goaltender just slightly out of position. That's all the room he needed to tie this one up at six with 3.30 left to go. Goal number two for Schmidt on the night on his fifth shot, as you see there. He, see, and you never really seem to get said they couldn't decide if they were double teaming someone, and the Lynchburg was able to use some, um, some quickness to just get Schmidt enough room to turn and fire that shot in. Faceoff dot's been more closely contested. I think some CNU fans might have thought as another faceoff violation will give Lynchburg the ball right back. Captains had come in winning about three of, out of every four faceoffs, but it's been pretty much even so far on the night. Captains held the advantage early when momentum was their lay, and Lynchburg has mostly evened out the numbers so far. Voigt with the ball for Lynchburg with. About three minutes left to play. Turns, fires for Schmidt. Bounce shot, kick save that time as Hanway is able to get a piece of that action. Look out for the back check from Lynchburg, but the captain's able to hold on, but still trapped in their own back end, having trouble clearing the ball. Now they'll kick it over far side with more room, and captains finally get the ball across midfield. So nice save that time by Tyler Hanway. Gets the old kick save. And they're on the bounce shot. Hornets enjoying a slim advantage of shots on goal, 23-21, but we're tied up at six of two and a half to play. Late substitution behind the play. Captain's on the move. Rolling off the defender. Gets a shot off and score. Andrew Cook. One of the big goal scorers for the captains comes in with 41 goals on the season so far. He's got 42 now, tucking that one in to give CNU the lead back at 7-6 to six of 218 left to play before intermission.
Nice job of even getting the shot off, as I thought Lynchburg actually had a pretty good defensive set against him. Some of the one-on-one -on -one situations we saw earlier, they were able to get much more room there. That time he had a defender draped over him, was still able to get the shot off. Now as Lynchburg wins the faceoff cleanly, Steve Kadelka is going to call a timeout and talk this one over, set up a play. 2-11 left to play here before the half. Christopher Newport, 7. Lynchburg Hornets, 6. We'll take a brief timeout ourselves. You're listening to the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Back after this. Every great college has a great city. For Lynchburg, we are near urban areas with lots of restaurants, shopping, and events. Plus, we are one of the top schools in the area. Come see for yourself. Beautiful night for some college lacrosse here at the University of Lynchburg. 2-11 to go here before half. CNU with a slim 7-6 lead over the number 11 Lynchburg Hornets. Some of the bigger goal scorers for CNU coming alive late here in the frame. Alex Brenda has got the first four for the captains. And then goals have been trickling in a little bit from Oslander and Cook and some of the other bigger names you expect to see on the sheet. Meanwhile, the Hornets... Pulled back into action. Riley Mitchell with the ball. He goes far side. That shot, I think his stick got tipped as he was getting ready to shoot it. Ball goes out of bounds. He'll retake position. Over a minute still left on the shot clock. Lynchburg rolling quickly this time. Here's a shot. Oh, nice save by Hanley. Tried to do the quick, almost wrap around from the back of the net. But you watch again, I don't know if the Hanway even saw where the shot was going. He just happened to be in the right position. But still, that's a heck of a stop that close up. So now Christopher Newport has the ball. They'll call timeout, try and set up a play with 141 left to go. We can keep the action right here as we talk through this game a little bit. And for those of you just tuning in, it was all CNU in the opening five minutes of this game as Alex Brendez goes four for four in his first four shots of this one. And blink and you miss it. And the Hornets are down four nothing and looked a little bit bleak to be honest with you. But as the Hornets have Sort of uh, just kind of clawed their way back into this one. Got it to a 5-2 to two or, or was it 5-2 to two or 5-3? to three. I have to look at my stat sheet as we go through here. But the Hornets were down but able to tie it up in the early goings here of the second quarter. Uh, CNU takes a 7-6 to six lead uh, just about uh, two minutes ago. And then both sides have traded shot opportunities here in timeouts as well. So uh, looking through the, uh, the individual sets, it was a 5-2 lead. I, I was right on that one. I should have trusted my gut. But, yeah, CNU was up 5-2 after the first quarter. Hornets claw back, going a 3-0 run to make it 5-5. And then it's kind of been back and forth since then with the captains taking a one-goal advantage. Tyler Hadley with three saves so far in the net for the Hornets, while Zach Hanway's had to do a little bit more. Seven saves in net. He's faced 26 shots so far officially for the CNU captains. Brenda's four goals. He's also had help from Drew Miller, Kobe Oslander, and Andrew Cook. Meanwhile, Lynchburg's got three goals from the freshman Spencer Vandenberg. Finn Schmidt with two. Riley Hastings with another tally for the Hornets. Approaching 90 seconds to play here before halftime. About a 30-second differential between shot clock and game clock. And the captains are on the move far side to Miller. Miller. Looking to roll off a screen this time. Shot blocked low. Save made by Handley. Leaving plenty of time for Lynchburg to set up something as well. We'll see what they do here as they try to get the ball. Across midfield, evading tacklers. Like a kickoff returner in the NFL, just shedding him, shedding him near midfield here. Nice job that time by both Riley Mitchell and also big number 33 and Cole Nestor that time. He was not going to be denied. Under a minute to play. And now we have a whistle, stoppage of play, and we get a 
Back judge calls a violation against the Hornets. So CNU takes the ball over before we have a chance to figure out what it is. Captains are quickly on the move. My eyeballs were going another direction. I did not see what the call was, but I don't think much of the Litchburg bench knew what it was either. But Steve Cadelk is still kind of asking for an explanation as we go under 30 to go here before the break. Captains are going to probably hold for last shot. Far side. Andrew Cook rolling, rolling shot. Save made by Hadley. Hornets pick the ball up. Quick play back the other way. Lynchburg going for the shot, but throws it right into the stick of Handway with under 10 to play. Had a little more time to set something up. Ball still loose. Now the long stick has it for Lynchburg, and now they're kind of throwing it back and forth. Missed opportunity there as time will expire. I don't know that Lynchburg knew how much time was even left on the clock. They picked it up with about 15 seconds ago. Had time to run with it a little bit more, it looked like. Instead, threw the long ball the other direction. Both sides did, and that's how our first half ends. Entertaining action back and forth. This one far from decided as CNU holds a slim 7-6 lead over the Lynchburg Hornets at halftime. We'll take a break ourselves and be back with stats and more thoughts on the first half. You're watching the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Back after this. physical therapist probably starting about halfway through college. I love the concept that exercise is medicine. You know, we're starting to discover that exercise really can remedy many of the things that we thought that only surgery or only drugs could remedy in the past. When the student comes here, it's because we believe in them. It's because we want them here. Um, it's because we believe they'll be successful. The faculty here are, are devoted to their development, not only academically, but also professionally. We're not so inundated with things that we don't have time to make students one of our highest priorities. We have your back. We're going we're gonna to help you through that. If you're willing to work, then we're willing to put the work into it and the effort to, to help you succeed. Ready for anything, okay? Come on, let's go together! Together, let's go!
Lynchburg is all about you, your ideas, and your goals. We've got one professor for every 10 students, so you can get all the support you need. In the classroom, in the lab, or in nature. You'll learn by putting yourself out there, and we're right there with you. We welcome you back to we welcome you back to halftime here at the University of Lynchburg. Seven to six, your score. Dave Walls here on the Lynchburg Hornet Sports Network. Hope you're having a wonderful night. Still about four minutes ago before the half. Let's run you through some of the first half stats of, and the game story so far. All CNU in the early goings of this game as the Captain's got a 4-0 run, all thanks to Alex Brendez, but Lynchburg's been able to really hold them off and kind of even this game out a little bit. You take a look at the, at the stats of the game. Turnovers, pretty much even, 10-8. to Faceoffs have been close as well. Christopher Newport has held, held a significant advantage in that category in, most of the, in their wins so far this year. So for Lynchburg to not only be, keep that close, but to actually be leading that at the half's got to feel good clears nine to ten on both sides and shots on goal right now as far as the quality shots Lynchburg's got an advantage there as well but again Alex Brendez with a 4-0 run to start the game four goals four shots to put the captains up but then Lynchburg has crawled their way back Spencer Vandenberg the freshman has a hat trick of his own so far they go on a 4-0 run of their own from the late first quarter into the second with Vandenberg's Hat trick capping one to tie this game up at five all. Kobe Oslander and Andrew Cook have goals, while Finn Schmidt has a tally as well. Both sides getting some good scoring opportunities late, but the goaltenders were able to get a couple of nice saves on net as well. So how are we looking as we – what are the things, if you're Steve Kadelka, right, that you're looking at in the half? Well, certainly – when CNU has found themselves in advantageous one-on-one -on -one positions, they've been able to take advantage. But Lynchburg's zone has really crowded up a lot of big scoring lanes. They've been able to force some nice turnovers as well, especially on the defensive end. We've seen the long sticks of Chris Darmenio and among others stepping up to make some big plays there as well. And again, the, the big key is not getting caught in a double team situations, being able to hold your ground in the zone. If you find yourself in a one-on-one -on -one situation, knowing where your help is. And then for Lynchburg as well, uh, one of the things we had noticed in the first quarter was maybe some of the shots from Lynchburg were more, you know, shots and may try to get a reset of the shot clock rather than good scoring opportunities. We've seen more of those good scoring opportunities in the second, and that trend will need to continue if Lynchburg is to regain this lead. As for CNU, it's about just getting that momentum back and keeping it. You know, the goals have been came early for Brendan's, but then he hasn't taken much many shots in the second. Meanwhile, some of the bigger scorers like Andrew Cook, who are you were used to seeing multiple times in a score sheet only have one tally so far and have had limited shot opportunities in fact both sides with several shot clock violations a little bit uncharacteristic so we'll have to uh, keep an eye and see on how some of those bigger names are doing as we get late into the action all right about a minute to go before the half we'll take one more 60 second timeout we'll come back with the second half action here at the university of lynchburg you're watching the lynchburg hornets sports network This video isn't about me. It's about the limitless possibilities that the University of Lynchburg allows me to be. An athlete, an artist, an adventurer, a writer, a believer, a human. Because what I love about the University of Lynchburg is that they have a saying, here we're home. And honestly though, I think a better fit would be 
a home for everyone. Because it doesn't matter the color of your skin, the person you love, the God you pray to, the pronouns you use, the city you're from, the language you speak. University of Lynchburg gives you the greatest opportunity they can for you to be the absolute best version of yourself. Ready for the second half, act, second half of action and the second chance of that opening line. Dave Walls here at Schellenberger Field. Glad to be stepping in uh, tonight for the call of number one CNU and number 11 Lynchburg Hornets have the ball. We start off going left to right on your screen. So far, the wind hasn't played as much of a role as I think we were all maybe thinking it could. The tree's definitely shaking around the Lynchburg facility, but with wind gusts going 40 to 50 miles an hour for a majority of the day around the region. It was worth keeping an eye on, but so far these athletes have uh, powered through it. So the Hornets start things off with the first offensive possession, looking to tie the action up. Riley Mitchell's been held quiet so far on the day. Kicks it up to Finn Schmidt, who's got two. Schmidt, far side over to Voigt. Voigt and one-on-one. -on -one. Gets a little room, however, ball checked away nicely that time by CNU and a quick break back the other way. Captain's on the run, hits the crossbar. Big play the other way and now a whistle from the back. Ball goes out of bounds, referee does signal CNU ball. Great job that time by midfielder Campbell Posen for the captains who's able to Poke that one away and start the fast break the other way. Captains have the ball back with about 40 to go on the shot clock. Kobe Oslander with the ball. Near side to Cook. Cook rolling, slips on the play. Sticks. Get exchanged, and then a lazy pass intercepted. And now here comes Lynchburg on a break. They've got numbers. Lynchburg trying to hit Schmidt near side. Can't connect on the pass, but Schmidt able to knock the ball around. Still loose on the turf. Now finally safely over into the net for a handway. He'll scoop it up, and captains dodge a bullet on the fast break. So both sides with an early fast break, but can't get any good shots on net. I shouldn't say that. The captains rang theirs off the crossbar, but so far... No one able to capitalize on the fast break, let's say that. Two minutes in, it's still a 7-6 game in favor of CNU. Captains 11-0, number one in the nation. Lynchburg, however, with, ranked, with a ranked win over WNL last week in overtime, beating Crosstown rival Randolph in ODAC action last night and coming at 7-3 on the season. Holding, rolling, however, pass up top for Miller. Can't hold on to it. Ball does go over and back, crossing midfield, so the Hornets will take possession. Ball seemingly rolled forever, and captains tried to deflect that right at the line and keep it from being an over and back situation. However, unable to do so, so Schmidt takes over for Lynchburg on the near side. Working one-on-one -on -one against his defender. Mason Beckmeyer throwing the defense down for CNU there. Now here's Riley Mitchell. Mitchell thinks about the shot. Instead goes in back of the net. Working one-on-one. -on -one, can't roll in the slot, so he'll go back up top. Mitchell has the ball again. Hastings in back of the net for Lynchburg if needed. Far side, it's Rust with the ball. Rust draws a double team back up top. Mitchell's got some room. Thinks about the shot. Instead, over to Finn Schmidt. Schmidt now holding as both teams reset. Stutter step and a great stick check that time by CNU. Brandon Young gets the long stick in there. One whack and it's loose. Captain's defense so far in the opening three minutes of the half. Not allowed much. Forcing two turnovers. So 
Substitutions at midfield. They're complete. Captain's now running it back with Auslander. Auslander over to Marcato on the left-hand side. Stutter step now trying to f find some room. Can't do it. He'll kick it over. One-on-one -on -one situation. Knocked down. Could have been a push. Referees let it play. The ball shot wide. And they'll actually say Lynchburg ball on the play. So Lynchburg takes over. They'll say no shot, just a loose ball that trickles out of bounds. Thought the Hornets might have actually gotten called for a push that time. Referees told them to play on. Pass nearly goes out of bounds, but Hornets somehow able to hold it in on the far side. Good hops that time by Luke Meadows, the freshman, able to keep that ball in play for Lynchburg. Now the Hornets finding a little bit of room for McCarthy. Far side now. Instead of taking the shot, they'll drop back. Gabe Anacha over to Ian McCarthy. McCarthy in one-on-one. -on -one. He's got Schmidt to his left-hand side. Instead, we'll go in back of the net to Hastings. Hastings picks up the low pass, now cycling it around. 35 on the shot clock. Connor Moore. Moore holding, now turns. Looking for a passing partner, but now cuts hard inside. That hole closed up quickly, so Lynchburg resets at 15 on the clock. Manacha with the ball, rolling left to right to McCarthy, 10 on the clock. Draws the double team, now they back off with five. Going to have to hurry, four. And now pass far side, that one's going to go out of play, and CNU forces a shot clock violation. Every time a hole opened up for just a split second, that it closed up just as quickly, and CNU's defense just called them flex seal, not a drip getting through right now. Six minutes gone here in the third quarter, seven to six your score. Lynchburg defense doing just as well for that matter. Really only one shot on net so far. It rang off the crossbar. Miller with the ball. Over to Ausland. No, excuse me. Is that Auslander? No, that was 28. My, my apologies. And Andrew Cook. The 8 and the 0 look very similar on those CNU jerseys. That's Auslander in back of the net with 20. Now stutter step. Brendez. In a one-on-one -on -one situation. Nice job that time by Lynchburg. Loose ball, but the pressure certainly contributed. And Alex Brendez, after the early success, has been shut down. Darminio on the fast break with the long stick. Lynchburg shot. Bouncer goes wide. Not sure if the stick slipped out of his hands or if there was some contact made. Cr cranked it back for a powerful rifle, but... Skipped out a little weakly. Nearly bounced in, though, as it caught everybody off guard. Lynchburg does retain possession with under eight to play here in the third quarter. Voigt with the ball. Gets a shove in the back, so he'll roll him back of the net to Hastings. Hastings cycling it around far side to Mitchell. Mitchell rolling now over to Voigt. Looking for some traffic in front of him. Can't find it, so we'll have to toss it far side to Rust. Confident one-on-one -on -one defense with some occasional double teams as CNU right now not allowing much, but Mitchell slips past the defender here over to Rust. Still no shooting angle, so Rust has to dump it off. Far side, Mitchell has it. Thinking about cutting back. Mitchell turns, fires, save made by Handway. They'll get a reset on that one as the ball skips out of bounds wide. So Mitchell hasn't tallied one in the net so far, but that's his best scoring opportunity of the night so far is that one goes high off either the shoulder or maybe even caught a piece of the helmet of Handway, and it skips out wide. So the Hornets with a fresh 60. Mitchell and Schmidt on the near side with Hastings on the f in back of the net. Russ fires, cranks, shot goes wide. Hornets ball again as Hastings will bring it back into play. Shots on goal even, 28 all, about as tight as a scoreboard. 7-6 to six captain's lead with 6.45 to play in the third. Mitchell, far side to Schmidt, has already got two. Now I'm back of the net to Hastings. Quick pass up top to Mitchell. Back to Schmidt, turns, fires, score!
the hat trick for Finn Schmidt on shot number 29 of the night. It's a 7-7 seven to seven ball game. Take a look at the replay. Is good passing here. Mitchell catches Schmidt with about three feet of open space and able to punch it just low near the five hole. Someone made this observation at the halftime, and this is no disrespect to the captains, but the energy has been on the Lynchburg sideline for most of the night, even when the captains have been scoring. You haven't seen much emotion out of them. Their fans have been delivering the emotion for sure all night, but captains still remaining very focused here on a tie 7-7 game. Be interesting to see how they react the longer this game stays close. Captains have the faceoff, however, and they have offensive possession. Holding the ball with 40 on the shot clock are the captains. Trying to find some room inside is Brett Jackson, but hasn't been able to do so. Turns, fires, that shot on the money goes wide. Jackson hits a turf, his stick goes flying, clean up an aisle three, but referees say play on. He even looked at the referee thinking there was going to be a late hit of some sort called there, but referees say, no, sir, pick your stick up. 23 on the shot clock. Drew Miller with the ball. Has some action to the right-hand side. And Brendes. Brendes working one-on-one. -on -one, gets past his defender. Now feeds it back to Miller. Had the low shot available and said holds it. Now fires it far side. Shot. Score. Brett Jackson able to sneak it past Tyler Hadley. I think Hadley actually may have gotten some contact and thought he had the uh, he had the save. He looked down for the ball thinking it was between his legs and it just scooted into the net in back of him. Captains retake the lead at 8 to 7. This will be an interesting one to watch back as again watch the far side here as Jackson scoots it low. He gets a piece of it and it just scoots. If you look at the far side of the net right in that near side corner right in that low corner right by his foot it just scooted in there and again Hadley made some contact on it but not enough in order to stop it so a face off ball pops out and the captains are able to win possession of it so CNU has the ball fumbling a little bit in their own end with it but now bringing it back up thanks to handway and goal and some good long stick play in the back in the midfield there. Now they're across the timeline. Oslander, far side. Late substitutions at midfield. They've got him now. Oslander looking for a screen. It falls apart on him, however, so he'll have to kick it far side to Will Mercado with Brendes in back of the net, left to right. Mercado. Thinks about cutting inside, can't find room, and instead he'll turn. Oslander back there. 25 on the shot clock. Over to Cook. Cook spins off a man, has a double team on him right now with 18. Right in front of the crease, Hornets catching a break as Will Mercado had room to play there right in front of the net, but can't hang on to the pass. Now we have a whistle, some confusion. They're going to get a reset. Not sure where the contact with net with the net was made, but regardless, captains catch a break and get a fresh 60. Three fifty-four here to go in quarter number three. Captains have just taking a retaking the lead at eight to seven. Oslander with the ball. Mercado to his right, now in back of the net, cycling it around. Turns, fires that one off the goal and goes wide. Late flag behind the play. We're going to get a penalty against the Lynchburg Horn. It's a one-minute man-up situation now for CNU.
Dom Zingo will take a knee. Those are the ones that hurt if you're a Lynchburg Hornets fan. It's the ones behind the play. But the referee was right in position for that one. So with 3.31 here to go in the third, captains will go a man up. Lynchburg's Tyler Hadley had just made a nice save on Brett Jackson on the far side when the play had happened. So a fresh 60 on the shot clock, man up for the captains. Looking to take a two-goal lead here late in quarter number three. So here comes the cycling. Counterclockwise, now kicking it back the other direction. Time to work here on a full 60-second man-up situation. Up top to Cook. Cook with Oslander in front of him for the screen. Now far side. Thought about the shot there, did Jackson. Doesn't have the room. Back over to Cook. 30 seconds of the man up. Here's a shot and a score. Brett Jackson. Far outside that time. Loaded the cannon, let it loose, and the captains have their largest lead of the game since the opening moments of it, a two-goal advantage at 9-7. to seven. So the one-minute cross-check penalty comes off, but certainly hurts the Hornets as Jackson had lots of room on the outside. The defender wasn't able to get the long stick in the way enough, and Jackson had a clean shot that time with lots of power behind it. 2.59 to go here in quarter number three. It's a two-goal advantage. Face-off violation. Captain's got a little bit of an early jump on the play, and Lynchburg will take over. As good as the captains have been inside the face-off circle, they've committed almost just as many face-off violations in this game tonight. And a lot of those early jumps, and the referees have been on it every time. So we resume action with Lynchburg with the ball. Riley Mitchell far side. Russ with a quick screen. Ball checked loose, however. Mitchell able to pick it back up, however. Now to Russ in the slot. Puts the shoulder down. Bounces off his man. Tries to hit Mitchell far side. Pass will go wide. That's a turnover going the other direction. And the captain's fans are coming to life. And the, and the grand stands to my right. Great crowd on hand here at Schellenberger Field. If you're in the Lynchburg area, this is the place to watch lacrosse on a Friday or Saturday night, or Saturday afternoon for that matter. But under the lights at Shellburger is a great place to be on a night like tonight where it's warm with a light breeze, almost downright tropical tonight. I'm not saying I wouldn't like a drink with a little umbrella in it, but it certainly wouldn't hurt. But as we resume action with under two minutes left to play, captains with the ball. Miller and back with the ball in back of the net. Oslander and Mercado. Mercado with the ball. Spin move by Brendez far side, but can't find any room. 30 on the shot clock. Brendez looking for help. He'll have to kick it back up top again to Oslander. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. No room to move there. Again, now he'll go far side to Cook. Cook slips back up, slips again. Stick checks in place. Still hangs on to the ball with 14 to go. And now a late flag comes in by the baseline official going to be another man up situation for the captains that one well behind the play let's see what the actual call is cross check is the call 30 seconds it appears to be Chris Arminia will come off for it or is it a one actually I think it's a one minute call wait for the official stat to come in I saw a 30 call and I also saw a minute call so who knows but we do know Chris Arminio's taking the knee with 103 left to go here before the end of the period, captains will go back up on the man advantage once again. And they're going to call Darmini on the several hacks he took there. Don't know that I agree with the call, but action does continue. So in the man up, Auslander with the ball. 
Captain's man up has been deadly so far tonight. Hornets have only stopped them once on the man up. Crucial play here for both teams with the end of the period approaching. 30 seconds left to go on the advantage. It is a one-minute call. Up top, now room inside, and Brendis is absolutely leveled in the slot. Big-time defensive hit by the Lynchburg Hornets that time as Alex Brendis thought he was going to be able to just toss a lazy one in the back of the net in the slot. Now with five seconds left to play, Mitchell's going to make a last-second run on it for the Hornets, but he gets stripped with one, and the captains pick the ball up, get it out of danger to end a very exciting third quarter as both teams enjoy a lead, lose the lead, and then throw in some big hits and penalties on top of it, meaning this fourth quarter has lots left in store for you, the viewer. At the end of three, the number one CNU captain's nine, the Lynchburg Hornets seven. We'll be back after this on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. I was really attracted to Lynchburg primarily because my dad went here. Um, he is an alum, so I kind of had that close tie of being interested in this school, and the school had what I wanted to study. I knew I wanted to help people in the area of health and wellness, so the health promotion program was definitely a program that drew me in, and from day one, I've been in love with it, and I wouldn't have chosen it different. I have never had um, better professors or teachers in my life. And I think here at the University of Lynchburg, the professors definitely care about their students, especially in the health promotion department. These professors want you to be educated, want you to have the experience, and just want you to feel confident going into your career path following your collegiate education. You just feel like you're cared for here and that you matter, and that no matter what, at the end of the day, you're gonna be successful. And the people here really want to be here, and everyone has a purpose, and it's just a great environment to be in. One quarter of action left to go here at Schellenberger Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. Number one, CNU holding a two-goal advantage over number 11, Lynchburg, 9-7. Dave Walls, sports director from ABC 13, sitting in with you tonight on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Thanks so much for the invitation to hop in and, let's be honest, enjoy a great game tonight. Jeremy Johnson from Lynchburg was the linebacker who basically uh, – Demolished Alex Brendez in the slot, holding them off on the man and man up advantage. I tell you what, if uh, you like fans going at it, <laughs> cheering for their team, and maybe a little bit cheering against each other in the stands, this is the game for you. As both sides traveled well and have shown up uh, tonight to represent their clubs. All right, as we start period number four. Face off violation by the Hornets. They had a bit of a jump there, and now it's going to be CNU on the opening possession. Coach Mikey Thompson's captains, 11 and 0 on the year, but have their hands full tonight. Only up two entering the fourth. Brett Jackson gets a screen in front of him, but can't do anything with it, so he'll kick it back up. Mercado to Brendez. Brendez looks to turn it fire, nowhere to go. Instead, he'll go back up. Another flag thrown in back of the net, and we'll get yet another Lynchburg man up, uh, excuse me, Lynchburg penalty, another CNU man up situation. Still 25 to go on this shot clock. Captains. Lots of movement, nowhere to go with it. Now Miller's stuck in back of the net. Tip, tack, toe, shot, and a score. Just as I say, they have nowhere to go. Will Mercado finds himself on the back door with no one in the goal in, in front of him. It's about as easy as it gets there. And CNU now up three goals, 10 to seven. Great patience, because there wasn't anything working for a while there, but then Miller just sees Mercado slip away there, and about the easiest finish you'll see. So the penalty wiped off the board as the captains score 116 into quarter number four. 10 to seven, your score. Largest lead since the first quarter for either team. 
But now it's CNU getting the jump in the face-off circle, so the Hornets will now take possession. Six different goal scorers tonight for the captains with Mercado getting that tally. Lynchburg would love to get some of their big goal scores like Riley Mitchell on. Shot, rebound, another one, and a score! But no, wiped off on the play as we get a crease violation. The third shot was the charm. Problem was Lynchburg had a, had a man in the crease that time. Even though it didn't interfere with the shot, it's still a violation. So wipe that goal off the border. It remains 10-7, and the captain's running it the other way. The second shot, and I apologize, the action was quick there, but the second shot on the doorstep, the man tried a diving shot. He fell into the crease. You have a chance to get out of the crease, but when the third shot comes in and he's still in the crease, that's when the violation actually occurs. So the captain's off and running again. Auslander in back of the net looking for some help. Right-hand side to Cook. Cook rolling. Cuts it back up to Brendes. Brendes gets a screen in front of him. Thinks about running in front of the net. Said goes in back of it now. 23 on the shot clock. Mercado now near side. One-on-one. -on -one. Mercado makes a run on the crease. Here's a shot and a score. Will Mercado beat his man cleanly that time? Hornets are going to want to learn from that one as they review the film of this game later on as Mercado made them pay for any hesitation. It's now 11-7 to here. Just three minutes in here in the final frame action. Take a look here as Mercado gets the ball one-on-one. -on -one. Defender just doesn't guard the, the baseline well there, and Mercado just says, I'm going to take what's mine, and he's able to go, and nothing Tyler Hadley could do there but give his best effort, but that one favors the offensive player every time. All right, face-off underway and the ball bouncing loose. Lynchburg takes possession. They need to get a goal and slow the tide down here a little bit, down four. Still plenty of time, just under 12 minutes to play in this game with the shots on goal tied up 33 all. Jake Russ with the ball. Swim move around the defender. Now near side, Mitchell goes low to high. Missed it a little bit short on the near side, but the Hornets regain possession still with about a minute on the shot clock. Mitchell, again, finally finds the net shot and a score. That's what we're used to seeing out of Riley Mitchell. That cannon who can hit the upper 90 at a moment's notice. He's been quiet so far tonight, but finds it there to get Lynchburg back into this game 11-8. You knew once Riley Mitchell got his got the ball in his stick again, he was shooting that thing, no doubt about it. And picture perfect placement that time as Hanway actually had good position. It was a very narrow window for that ball to go in. So now each faceoff becoming more and more important as the Hornets trying to claw back into this one. And Michael Krause able to swiftly scoop that one and give Lynchburg the ball right back. Krause. Coming in tonight, somewhere between 55, 60% on his face-off opportunity so far on the year. And he's been doing a good job against a very stingy offense. And here's a long stick goal. Chris Darminio on the break on the far side. You love to see it that time, as I don't think anyone from CNU thought he was going to roll the whole way to take the shot that time. He did. So just like that, it's a two-goal game again. Can't blink, in, can't blink with Lynchburg lacrosse. Watch, Darminio has it. Every, gets past two defenders, and nobody picks him up, and he says, all right, I'll take this one myself. Throws it in far side. Hornets fans on the far sideline loving that one as well. As I mentioned, the track on the far side full. The, grand, the stands here pretty much full on both sides. A sea of blue for CNU on my right and a sea of red and white on my left for Lynchburg. 
Face off the other way, and now we have a loose ball violation as both teams fighting for it. Hornets will take possession. So now the momentum tilting the other way now for Lynchburg, back in their direction. Down two, 10.45 to go here in quarter number four. Captains went on a 4-0 run, entering into the early fourth, but now Lynchburg has scored two straight to claw back into it. Voigt bouncing off a shot, that, uh, bouncing off a defender that time for the shot. It'll go wide, but Lynchburg able to retain possession. 52 on the shot clock, quickly back into play. Voigt, excuse me, Hastings brings it back in to Rust. Rust rolling left to right, looks for a lane. Or for a screen or for somebody, can't find it. Instead, he tries to feed it in front of the net to Voigt. But before he can do that, Whistle stops play. And the captains do have the ball. Not sure why the whistle was blown, to be honest with you. CNU would take possession cleanly. Back official then blows the whistle, then tells him to start it up again. All right, so why don't we start it up again? Under 10 minutes to play. Wind gusts picking back up here at Schellenberger Field. But as we mentioned, it really hasn't seemed to affect the play at all. But certainly you're going to hear it. You may even see it from time to time. And any of the surrounding scenery is the wind gusts have kicked up over 40 miles an hour for a majority of the day. Captains with the ball. Jackson near side, one on one. Good pressure put on that time. Can't find the lane to run, so he's got to come back out near side. 30 on the shot clock. Jackson tries to roll. Defender picks him up. Mercado had the ball come in and out of his stick, and he was on the doorstep. Lynchburg catches a break that time. Captains had the right idea. They were able to break Mercado off again near sign, but just couldn't hang on to the pass. That's happened two or three times for CNU tonight where they've had an open man, but they just haven't been able to hold on to the pass. That would have set up probably an easy score. It said Lynchburg is going to take possession of it, down two under nine minutes to play. Connor Moore. With McCarthy out there on the far side, McCarthy has the ball. Feeds it. Now in front of the net to Vandenberg. Tried a bounce shot in front of the net. Everybody missed it that time. Lynchburg has the ball. No reset, though, on the clock. So still 30 to play on the shot clock. Up top to McCarthy. McCarthy rolling, had a bit of an angle, now stops and cuts back. Finn Schmidt to his right. McCarthy looking for some help and now gets a flag. This is going to be a call against CNU. Seven to go on the shot clock. We'll see if the Hornets can get a shot off. Riley Hastings with the ball now knocked loose and CNU picks it back up. Two, one. And now a whistle stops play, but the Hornets are going to go man up for the first time in what feels like forever. Holding call, 30 seconds. Cam Campbell Posen will go off here as you take a look here. Posen had a hold of that right arm. So now Lynchburg with a chance to get it back within one. We'll have to move quickly. Rust near side. Up top to Schmidt. Schmidt over to Mitchell. Mitchell to Rust. Rust shoots it and scores! Jake Rust slipped it between two defenders. I'd be very surprised if Zach Handway ever saw that one. Man up advantage pays off. Hornets take it to the bank and get within one at 11 to 10. Great awareness by Russ. He didn't have much of a lane, but he saw something between the two defenders. In fact, you see the one kind of bow down low. He was trying to give Hanway a little more vision, but I don't know that he got down in time. The shot was basically already off by the time he got out of the way. Captains win the faceoff and then turn it over and a score! Wild turn of events, Spencer Vandenberg 
tallies goal number four on the turnover. And we've got a tie game at 11 to 11 and an injury timeout as well as tough break for the CNU defender. Watch as he wins the faceoff, but then just slips on the turf. Vandenberg right there, goaltender not even in position. And Lynchburg able to tie it up 11 to 11. However, we do have an injury timeout on the field. The captain player limping it off on the field. He is does appear to be in some pain, but the medical staff right there to help him out. And also good to see his teammates out there helping him out. Warner Cabinus, the sophomore face-off specialist. Not responding well. Usually you'd like to see, if you're a, a medical trainer or a fan of a team, you'd like to see a player kind of shake it off as he's walking off the field. Cabinus looking very stiff right now. He does pick up his stick, though, so frustrated, but he does pick up his stick. Looks like he'll try to stay in this game as much as he can, but that means CNU is going to have to switch it up a little bit inside the circle. Cole Evans will now take the faceoffs for the captain. So Lynchburg with an opportunity facing someone they haven't seen in the circle much tonight, if at all. Michael Krause in there for the Hornets, trying to win that. Ball loose near side, three Hornets around it. They pick it up. Darminio picks it up with the long stick, and Lynchburg has tied it up once again after being down four on a 4-0 run right now and with the ball, seven minutes left to play. We knew this one would be an entertaining scrap, and it has delivered through four quarters. Jake Rust with the ball, rolling right to left, takes the shot, goes a little bit wide, May have been deflected along the way. Lynchburg retains possession. Still about 50 seconds ago on the shot clock. Now quickly back into play is Hastings. Hastings gets his man to slip down but can't take advantage. It's Ed Mitchell. Mitchell rolling through a screen there. Mitchell through two defenders. That time the shot, his stick gets hit as he goes to shoot it. But no, the referee says that's not a shot. They said it was a pass and they're going to give the captain's possession. Coach Steve Kodelka is pleading his case saying, come on, he was shooting it. When the shot goes that high and wide, you run the risk of a referee saying that. And as much as I think it was a shot, you can't necessarily disagree with him. So the captains will take over. They're catching a break on the shot rule to pass out of bounds. Cook with the ball, one on one against Darminio. Rolling right, now back to the left, cuts. Now gets into the lane, has a little room to run, shoots, save made by Tyler Hadley. And now quick back the other way are the Hornets. Fast break, four on three if they hurry. Lynchburg will decide to hold it and get some substitutions out. Nice job that time by Lynchburg's Cole Zacharias. Recognized the numbers were only a slight advantage, decide to hold it for a better opportunity that time. The young sophomore making a good decision there. Five and a half to play. Shots favoring the Hornets, 42-34. Still a tie ball game, though. Both sides with their second half timeouts here as Jake Russ with the ball. Has a man in back of him over to Mitchell. Scoots inside. Bounce shot. That time, I believe Hanwake did get a piece of it as it bounces high over. Lynchburg was looking for a reset. Referees do give the reset, so it did hit Hanway. And Hastings brings it back in. Tries to... Do a quick wrap around, but has a man draped on him, so holds on back up top. Over to Mitchell, far side, has a screen in front of him. Mitchell, lane closes up, kicks it back to Finn Schmidt. Schmidt now near side to Rust of 40 on the shot clock. Rust in one-on-one, -on -one, slips past the defender, shot in the score! Tremendous patience by Jake Rust. Could have taken the shot when he had a defender draped on him and said held it until he got clear. Had some room to run, and Lynchburg back in the lead. 4.57 left to play at 12-11. And I can't state it enough again. I love the patience of a younger player. Might have just tried to take the shot as soon as he broke off here, but said gets about three more shots, and CNU didn't press him on defense the way you would have thought if you see someone attacking with the ball come up and try to fill the gap instead 
caught them flat-footed right in front of the net, and Lynchburg took advantage. Meanwhile, Lynchburg taking advantage for the second straight time inside the faceoff circle. As Kraus wins it, he's actually making a run with it. Now Steve Kadelka will call time out, and the Hornets will set up a play. CNU actually did have Warner Cabinets back in the game, so good news if you're a captain's fan, but he got beat cleanly that time, so Lynchburg will get the ball when we come back. 447 left to play, up one, 12 to 11. You're watching the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network back after this. Hornet Nation fired up right now as Lynchburg has the ball. 4.47 remaining, and they're up one, 12 to 11. Win or lose right now, Lynchburg's had the resilience of bouncing back several times in this one. They've twice faced four goal deficits and been able to come back every time to take a lead. Now they'll look to expand it into a two goal lead right now with the ball and about a minute to go on the shot clock. Connor Moore, left to right now, far side to Schmidt. Schmidt's got two on the night so far. Now to Ian McCarthy. Back of the net now to Hastings. Hastings looks to roll inside, draws a double team and said he'll come back up top. Gabe Menacha over to Schmidt. Schmidt thinks about the shot. That hole closed up quickly, able to hang on. He'll dump it off to Hastings again, 30 on the shot clock. Big move inside by Hastings. Takes a tough angle shot that time. May not be the one that Lynchburg would have wanted, but Hanley able to come up and get a piece of it for the save, and now the captains will roll quickly the other way. 3.50 remaining in regulation. 12 to 11, Lynchburg. Substitutions complete for the captains. Alex Brendez had the first four goals of the game in the first quarter and hasn't had much in the way since. Of course, when you score four in the first period, you don't necessarily need more, but definitely a great start for him. But he's been quiet the remaining three quarters. 25 on the shot clock. Captains of the ball near side in front of their bench up top now to Jackson. Jackson. Couple rolls, tries to create some space, gets a little bit, but can't shake his defender, still finds room for the score. I don't know how Jackson got that one off. Credit where credit is due. The defender stayed on him, but Jackson was able to wind his way, get the stick outside, fire it high. We've got a tie ball game again at 12-12. Very impressed with the length that J Jackson showed on that play. As you take a look here, Jackson rolling multiple times. He's got the defender with him and didn't have much of didn't have much room. Even watching it on it's impressive on replay. You know, I'm I live in Lynchburg. I'm doing the broadcast for Lynchburg, but you, you gotta give credit where credit's due. That was just an amazing shot. Now the ball loose on the faceoff bounces right in front of the Lynchburg net. Dangerous play, but Hornet's able to pick it back up. Henry Mandarin over to Chris Darminio Hill. Pass it up to Riley Mitchell, gets a stick on it. Get it up across the timeline. Jackson with the hat trick now for CNU. It's his third of the night. Six different goal scores for the captains. Six also for the Hornets. Spencer Vandenberg with four to lead the way for Lynchburg. 
2-10 remaining in regulation. Jake Russ with the ball. Two spin moves. Thinks about it. Shot goes wide. Out of play. Hornets regained the ball with 39 on the shot clock. And now whistle stops play. And we're going to get a timeout call from CNU. Coach Mikey Thompson wants to talk it over. Run through the scenarios here. Each team with one timeout remaining. 2.03 in regulation. We'll take a brief timeout and come back with the conclusion of this game. Tied 12-12 to -12 here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Think a private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. You might even do research together and plan out your next career moves. This is the dough. It's wicked cute. It's always so pretty. Two o three remaining in regulation. Lynchburg with the ball, tied 12-12. Shots 45-35 in favor of the Hornets. They also lead the shots on goal 24-19. One big area that I've noticed has really jumped up here in the second half. Lynchburg had more turnovers in the first half. That's pretty much evened up now, 18-15. to 15. Hornets have more, but certainly that margin was much wider in the first half, so... Credit to the Hornets for controlling their play, and they've also been able to draw a couple man-up situations here that help them claw back into this game. Right, Mitchell one-on-one, -on -one. bounce shot. Handley may have gotten a toe on it. Referees do not give a reset, so 21 remaining on the shot clock. Hastings in back of the net, working quickly. Devoit, who scores? Grant Devoit. Sneaks his way into the slot, bounce, shot good, and the Hornets have a 13-12 lead over the number one team in the nation with 139 remaining in regulation. Voigt's been working hard tonight, hasn't had much to show for it, but look at this. Nice little pass, one little step, cuts inside, and then the overhand shot bounces in. So now the face-off circle, crucial for the Hornets. Ball, however, cleanly won by CNU. They'll roll the other way. Can't control it, however. Still bouncing, but picked up. And now Mikey Thompson and the captains will talk it over. That's their final timeout. Crucial face-off win that time for Warner Cabinets in the face-off circle. After struggling on a few, he comes up big there, and now the captains... Well, can basically hold for a last shot if they want to. We'll keep the action here with 132 remaining in this ball game. Fantastic action here so far. That was Grant Voigt's first goal of the game on his fourth shot for Lynchburg. And like I said, he's been uh, he's been facilitating a lot of the other goals, even though he doesn't have an assist. He does have one assist on the night, but he's been uh, in there all night long doing a lot of dirty work behind the play and don't mean dirty in a bad way, but doing a lot of the things to make the offense work. He's been doing a nice job inside, and good to see him get that goal. Seven different goal scores for Lynchburg. Tyler Hadley has seven saves for the Hornets. He's faced 35 shots on the night. Meanwhile, Zach Hanway has really had to stand up to the challenge tonight. As 12 saves, he's seen 47 shots zing his way. Brett Jackson has had the hot hand down the stretch here for the captains. He has the hat trick on the night. Brendis has been quiet since the first after getting his four goals. Will Mercado with two, Drew Miller, Kobe Oslander, and Andrew Cook each with one. So CNU out of timeouts, back underway with 90 seconds to play in this game. 16-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. So the captains will have to get a shot off with 
no less than 16 seconds remaining. Auslander with the ball into the slot. Ball knocked loose. Rebound is still out there. Who's got it? Ball bouncing. And now we have a whistle behind the play. We're going to get a loose ball violation, and the captains will pick it up. They'll get a fresh 60. Still about a 13-second differential between game clock and shot clock. Brendez picks it up, tries to roll inside, now cuts back. Has a man. Shot, low save made by Hanley. Hanley's got the ball in his stick. Great job by the Lynchburg defense. And picking up that loose ball that Hanley had, Chip Quinn was back there, the senior defender for Lynchburg, to pick it up, get it back in the goaltender stick. Now a big pass, far side. Oh, Voigt had the ball in his stick. Now the ball's still loose, still rolling around. Who's got it? Captains can't control. Still bouncing. Now they finally pick it off. Lynchburg tried to go for the home run play to Void. If he connects on that, the goaltender's out of the net. They could stuff that goal home and win. It said CNU's got the ball with 30 to play. Running. Far side is Brendes. Fires. Goes wide. Ball out of bounds of 24.4 left to go. Now we have a whistle. Stop at your play. Coach Steve Kadelka will call his final timeout. Both teams have exhausted their timeouts. None left to take. 24.4 seconds remaining in this ball game. So Lynchburg with a, had a golden opportunity to possibly seal the game away after securing that save. It's a gamble, but you, you, they went for Voigt far side. Pass is a little high. If he's able to somehow can come down with it, handways. 15 feet outside of the net as he tried to come out to intercept the pass. Voigt gets it. All he's got to do is throw it home for the win. Instead, they're able to finally corral the rebound, giving them this final opportunity. So the captains have tried going to Brenda's a couple times here late in the fourth quarter. That's probably his best opportunity as he fired up the cannon. I could see them going back to Jackson as well if they need an inside shot. Late, he certainly had the length to get around the Lynchburg defense here in the second half. Jackson with the hat trick, Brendes with four. This will be the last opportunity CNU gets. Lynchburg bench trying to rally up the crowd, looking for the upset over the number one team in the nation. Captains have not lost all year, but in danger of doing so tonight in Lynchburg. Back underway, clock running, under 20 to play. They're going to get all the way up top to Brendes. Brendes on the run. He's got room. Shot, save made by Hanley. Went off his left side. Ball kicks out of bounds of 10.2 left to play. No timeouts. They'll have to go right back into action. Clock running, under nine, under eight. Auslander into the slot. Here's a shot. Goes wide. And back of the net, 4.2. Here we go. Clock running, three, two, dive inside, shot and a score. Point two seconds left. We'll be headed to overtime as the captains get the miracle goal to tie it up 13-13. With under four seconds left to play and in back of the net, you kind of figure they were going to have to do a crease dive of some sort and Yet the captain still found a way to get inside here. Take a look as just one simple deke is all Andrew Cook had time for, but it was enough. The faceoff will come at midfield, but with .2 seconds left, it really doesn't matter. And we're going to go to sudden death overtime. Four quarters of action, not enough to decide this one. We'll go to sudden death. 13 to 13. We'll be back with the thrilling conclusion of this game next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. At the University of Lynchburg, we've lowered our tuition so you get a better value for a great education. Come see our campus for yourself. My name is Alexis Fabula. I major in criminology and I double minor in psychology and criminal forensics. My favorite part about Lynchburg is the friends that I've um, come to have. It's helped me come out of my shell more and it's helped me become the person I am and the student I am. I really enjoyed how small the campus was and I also really enjoy um, how small the class sizes are. It made me feel like I was going to be more 
We're ready for sudden death overtime here at Schellenberger Field, the Campus University of Lynchburg. Tied up 13-13. The captains get the tally from Andrew Cook with .2 seconds left. Call it the miracle goals. They had to run from him back of the net. One little deke in front and then was able to stuff it up high. There's life in the captains yet. Hornets, however, still with an opportunity to get the upset. This faceoff crucial. Loose on the turf. We're underway. Ball kicked loose. It is touched by the Hornets. And we get a, yes, it will be Lynchburg ball. Next goal wins it. Let's see what happens. Riley Mitchell has the ball as substitutions finishing up. Jake Rust, far side. Also out there is Voigt. Finn Schmidt, far side. Hastings in back of the net. Here's Rust working one-on-one. -on -one. Spins over to Mitchell, far side. Slips, however. Ball dropped on the turf. And now the captains have it, but that ball is tipped as the defender falls on the turf. Now we have a whistle and a violation. It's going to go back to Lynchburg. Scary moments there as Riley Mitchell slipped and the ball came loose. Captains picked it up momentarily, but now lose possession going back to the Hornets. Jake Russ picks it back up. Has Mitchell behind him with Voigt over on the far side. Voigt cuts inside, now back up top to Mitchell. Still a full minute on the shot clock. Next goal wins. Mitchell bounce shot goes low and wide. Lynchburg retains possession. Back underway. Hastings with the ball, up to Mitchell, now over to Rust. Voigt working a screen on the inside. Now Rust slips, taking down on the play, and now we have a whistle, stops play, and Coach Steve Kudelka wisely calling time out. A little bit of nervous energy from both teams here in the early goings of overtime. We'll keep the action here. 2.43 remaining in this first overtime period, tied up 13-13. Those of you tuning in late to see the winner of this one, it's been a wild back and forth game. Captains have had two four goal advantages, but haven't been able to close it out. Alex Brendis with the first four goals of the game, all for the Horn, all for the captains, I should say, before Lynchburg claws their way back on a 4-0 run that extends into the second period. Seven to six captains though at the half into the third. Captains get it up to 11 to seven before the Hornets are able to take the lead. They're up one, 13 to 12, with four seconds remaining, but Andrew Cook sprints from the back line and back of the net and is able to stuff it up high with .2 seconds left. You want drama, it doesn't get much better than this. 13-13, sudden death overtime. Lynchburg's used their timeout. They still have one remaining in this period, I believe. Both sides have turned it over already in overtime, Hornets. Once, Captains lost it on the faceoff violation, and then after picking it up, lost it on another violation on the far side. We're back underway, 45 on the shot clock. Voigt and Mitchell out there with Russ on the far side. Russ rolling left to right. Cuts inside, now over to Menacha, looks like, on the far side, but the ball loose on the turf. CNU picks it up, and they're off and running. Campbell... Posen with the ball, far side. Next goal wins. Captains trying to remain undefeated, 11-0. Posen far side. I believe that's Brenda's in the far corner. It is. Looking for Cook, who tied it up and forced overtime. Cook has it. Right to left now in back of the net, working one-on-one. -on -one. Cuts, cuts out of the right, looks to turn and fire. Shot goes high, still rolling. Lynchburg trying to get to the end line first. Doesn't do it, very close play, but CNU closer to the end line. They will hold on to possession, 35 on the shot clock. Brenda's running. Nobody's picked him up yet. Now he throws the brakes on. Brenda's trying to work through a screen here. Now whistle stops play, and CNU's going to use one of their timeouts with 133 remaining in this first overtime frame. 
Feels like a monster truck rally here at Schellenberger Field because you get the whole seat, but nobody's using it right now. You get the edge. Neither side has really gotten a decent shot off yet here in overtime as the shot Lynchburg had. No good. And then the most recent shot from Cook went high and wide. Lynchburg almost was able to get possession back, diving towards the end line. But CNU has the ball. When we come back, 27 seconds on the shot clock. Shots in this game, 48-41 in favor of the Hornets. But at this point, all that matters is the scoreboard as it's a 13-13 game. For CNU, Brendis with four, Jackson with three. Mercado coming on late with two. Same with Cook, who has two. With Drew Miller and Kobe Auslander, each with one. Spencer Vandenberg, the freshman for Lynchburg, has got four goals to lead the way. Ben Schmidt with the hat check. Jake Rust of two. Then it's Mitchell, Voigt, and Darminio and Riley Hastings, each notching a goal. Lynchburg's had a couple very close losses. You remember a month ago, it looked like they were going to be able to take out number four Salisbury at the time, but the Seagulls were able to get a late goal force over time and get the win. Hornets don't want to keep ending up in these situations where they've got to settle for a close but no cigar type of game. Christopher Newport would love nothing more than to hang one on them just like that. Jackson with the ball. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Going to have to move. Rolling, rolling. Can't find a lane. Jackson rolls. Shot goes high and wide into the net. They'll have three seconds on the shot clock. Three, two, one. Can't get the shot. Shot clock violation. Lynchburg's defense stands strong. Not sure that he even got the shot off that time as the clock was expiring. Regardless, Lynchburg able to breathe a sigh of relief and bring the ball back the other side of the field. Substitutions in place. We're under a minute to go in this first overtime, and now a late flag comes in. Could be some sort of substitution violation. So CNU, who goes that far, will get a penalty. And now we have a whistle and a stoppage of play. 42.5 seconds left to go here. Looking for the official call here. Flag was thrown right in front of the CNU bench, right where the faceoffs are, excuse me, the, uh, the substitutions are made. Yep, it is a, it is a penalty to CNU going down to serve it. Drew Miller, he'll take the knee here. And now, sudden death overtime. Lynchburg, a man up, and lazy pass right away, and the captains are able to steal it. Goaltender, Zach Hanway, caught the Hornets napping as they thought they were in a man-up situation, which they were, but captains steal the ball, and now short-handed. Now the ball loose on the turf. They'll still pick it back up. Mitchell nearly forces him across the timeline. 18 seconds left. Short-handed, though, could still win this thing in the first OT. Here's Cook rolling. Now in front of the slot, here's a shot and a score. Alex Brendes gets the short-handed tally with 9.6 remaining. And CNU escapes Lynchburg, 14-13. to Wild sequence as Lynchburg goes from being a man up. They resume action, but Handway... Johnny on the spot, steals the lazy pass, forces the action out of the way, and Brenda is able to get behind the play, stuff it into the Lynchburg net, and the Hornets once again find themselves on the short end of an overtime loss, 14-13. to We'll take a quick timeout and recap the action when we come back. This is the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. When creating a sustainable future, your choices matter, even your choice of a college. The University of Lynchburg is the first college in Virginia to go carbon neutral. Our dining hall is green restaurant certified. We compost all of our food waste and purchase our electricity from landfill gas. Now we're turning a hazardous lake into a thriving urban wetland. When you choose Lynchburg, you leave a smaller footprint while building a better tomorrow.
Welcome back to Schellenberger Field one final time. Dave Wall, sports director of ABC 13 here. And the two games I've sat in on, Lynchburg suffering heartbreaking defeats in overtime. Christopher Newport doing it tonight by a one goal advantage. Take a look here as the captains find Alex Brendez, who had been quiet since that opening tally of the game, right in front of the crease of nine seconds left. That's your game winner as the captains were actually shorthanded at the time. That's all set up by goaltender Zach Hanway, who, again, steals the pass as Lynchburg brings the ball back into action with 24 seconds. Lynchburg thought they were man up, set up, ready to maybe get that clinching goal, and it all comes crumbling down just seconds later. Let's recap the stats here as we wind up the play here as players get the handshakes here of one final time. As far as the comparisons go, Lynchburg finishes the game 49-44, winning the shots advantage, also 26-23 in the shots on goal. Lynchburg uh, doing very well tonight inside the faceoff circle, 19-12. Uh, penalties, uh, Lynchburg had some very costly ones, four penalties on the night for 210 seconds. Uh, CNU with three on the night for 120. Uh, Lynchburg going two for three, uh, CNU two for four on the man advantage. But again, it's the shorthanded tally that really hurts the Hornets down the stretch. Uh, quickly down the stat sheet, Zach Hanway, 13 saves in net for CNU, but coming up with some big turnovers, including the one that set up the game-winning goal. Alex Brendez, five goals, one assist. He had the first four goals of the game. Brett Jackson with the hat trick for the captains. For Lynchburg, Tyler Hadley, nine saves, did a great job in net. A couple of those goals you just can't do anything about. Nice game from Spencer Vandenberg, the freshman, four goals. Finn Schmidt with the hat trick. Jake Russ of two. Then Riley Mitchell, Grant Voigt, Chris Arminio, and Riley Hastings each with one. That'll do it here from Schellenberger Field. It, remi it reminds me to thank uh, Lynchburg Athletic Director John Waters for his support and for the invitation to do the game tonight, as well as his tremendous crew for the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network for making me feel so welcome. Hope you'll keep watching the Lynchburg Hornets the rest of the season. It's a good team. Just had a little bit of bad luck down the stretch and some mistakes. They'll be back at work soon. Again, your final score tonight, number one, CNU 14, number, 13, number 11, Lynchburg 13. Thanks for watching, everybody. Dave Wall signing off for the Lynchburg Hornet Sports Network. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday nights.